Hi, I'm Justin Harnish, welcome to the show. Well, it's the middle of summer and already so much has changed around the old homestead, but it's far from over if I want everything to be off my block. Never-ending weeds. You'd think I'd be over them by now, but really, it's uh, it's still quite calming. Whether I'm sitting here listening to the songs of the birds, or music, or a podcast in my headphones. So this is kind of a reflective episode, going over some of my successes and failures of the home garden. Just remember, I'm just an amateur. And even though I'm no stranger to gardening, I've never done it on this scale before. I've done plenty of things wrong, which I will definitely improve on or change next time. But there's also been some happy accidents, which I'll definitely do next time. I also want to show you what I have planned for future shows, including the all-important man cave. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So one of the first things that I didn't really do as good as I should have is prepare and properly manage this particular raised bed. Everything from what I planted and the dirt I used or the preparation for the bed. The corn itself needs to be planted in an area where it gets full sun all the time. In this particular area, because of where the sun is, there's shadow on it for half the day. So the ears are a little bit smaller and possibly not as sweet and juicy. Um, probably would have been better to put lettuces or something like that in here instead of the corn. That goes the same for the broad bean as well. The pods are small, they may be sweet but they just haven't grown very well. Um, height wise they're not overly overly tall. Uh, admittedly it's a dwarf plant but they should have been taller anyway. They deserve to be in a very sunny area. So next time corn and of course the broad beans will be in a more sunny place. And on the other side of that same coin is this particular bed which is literally feet from the other. It's in full sun most of the day. Um, there's shadows maybe to a third of it over on that direction. But this has gone really well. The problem is that right at the moment we're looking at drought uh, conditions so some of the seedlings didn't survive because I maybe didn't water it as much as I should have. As success stories go, this is one of the better ones. Uh, the training of the passion fruit here, some of the fruit that's coming off this uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks they're going to be ready to eat, sweet, succulent and mm, yummy. Um, and also the pumpkin. Training the pumpkin up the wall and across as well as the cucumbers has given me a, a lot more room, a decent pumpkin and somewhere I can put other plants down the bottom. The cucumbers, again up the wall taking up as little space as possible and give me some nice fruit. There's more to come. This is really just the start of the cucumbers uh, and the gherkins. Here's a gherkin. Um, I actually prefer to eat these straight up rather than pickling them. The Scarlet Runners, another success story. Look at how they're growing along the trellis and giving me a bit of a wall, it's a bit of privacy. The dwarf beans not so much, I planted them too early so I put some more seeds down and um, hopefully use a bit more space here or in other gardens to get some dwarf beans happening for yummy time. So there are the flowers, won't be long before they start fruiting and you can see the colour there is why they are called the scarlet runners. Beautiful and hopefully they'll spread across the whole plant making a nice aesthetic yumminess. So here's another success story. If you're looking to grow vegetables but you don't have a lot of space, maybe a little part on your veranda or your porch and not a lot of garden room, get yourself pots. In this case I've got a tomato, in particular what's called the money maker and as you can see there, nice red fruit ready to eat. 
that might be lunch. Make sure you've got a sturdy, in this case bamboo uh, stake that you can tie the plant to so it doesn't fall over and, and break itself down at the base. So tying it back, once it gets to a point where it's above the stake, you may want to clip it off so it doesn't become too unstable and fall over. But in this case, very happy with it and uh, looks good and I bet it tastes even better. I've got plenty of wood to make lots of great stuff out of. Got it from pellets. And in here, that's the man cave. You want to see inside? Yeah, nah. Not this time. Too messy. Another little project I have for this year is to get this thing sorted out. It used to be a pond, it used to have fish, it used to be really cool. But the neighbour's kids, they decided to trespass, throw rocks in the pond, and I really only had a liner in it, so that got destroyed, the water drained, the fish died and everything like that. So I'm going to make this all pretty and get some concrete down here and get some more fish sometime this year. Okay, so here's the quick and easy on coleslaw. Uh, fresh carrots from the garden and half a cabbage left over from last time. So chopping board, knife, cabbage, carrots, mayonnaise, a decent bowl and a grater. And that's rabbit food. And there you have it. So there's enough going on here in the veggie patch and in the chicken coop to keep me well happy and fed. Now the problem is I'm a happy omnivore and even though I don't have to have meat every single meal, I do know that a balanced diet is just as important to me as exercise. Now I'm happy to spend five bucks down the road at the local butcher on some decent sausages or a, a nice steak. But that's not really the point, is it? 
that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to have everything off my block. But there's no meat here. I mean, we've got chickens, but we've got the whole egg thing going on. Now I can go fishing and bring home some very important food for the cave, as it were. But for the day-to-day -day meat, there really isn't any. Or is there? I guess you'll just have to keep watching each week to find out. So what else have I learnt while doing this series? Probably the first thing is the amount of seedlings that I actually plant that does need to be fine-tuned. Take potatoes for example. They're easy to grow, they're yummy, who doesn't like potatoes? But I just didn't have enough. Come. <laughs> Look at you. Now the spinach and the silver beet, as much as I like to have the same plants ticking over year after year, in this climate, they, they tend to bolt pretty quickly when the season pops around. So fresh plants every year is going to have to do. Also, I think the Off My Block series is getting better. Uh, from my humble beginnings, it has evolved into something a little more than what I expected it to be. Uh, everything from my camera work to the editing and audio and all the other bits and pieces, I'm definitely learning as I go. I love it. I've learnt that chickens are dumb. And they can be quite cruel to each other. But you've got to love them. And if you treat them right, they can give you beautiful, fresh eggs almost every day. Pellet wood. You can make just about anything out of it. May the flying spaghetti monster bless the wood of the pellet. I learnt a lot about myself and others and found out that no matter how much you think you know somebody, sooner or later you get to see the person behind the mask. And that can be scary sometimes. Well that's about it for this episode, but there's a couple of things I'd like to mention. The first one is about the Quitter's Guide to Smoking. That's my personal journey to quit smoking. It is going very well by the way. Thank you. But that segment will no longer be a part of the main series. I've put together a different series called the Quitter's Guide to Smoking and you can see that by clicking this link right here. The other thing is the Off My Block Instructionals which you can get to by clicking this link right here. It's a series of how-to videos taken from the actual episode so check them out and if you like them subscribe to my channel and give me a, a thumbs up on each video. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching on YouTube, please check on down there. There's a thumbs up thingy, you know, I like it, you know, the video, like it. Give me a big thumbs up, and please subscribe by clicking the link down here. And until next week, remember, keep calm and garden on.